I want to spend a little more time talking about the browser as well as working with controllers, mappings, some of the flexibility things that exist with the interface inside of Bitwig, beginning with your menus. You can pin things to these menus that you use frequently. And from left to right, eventually all the way to the right, we have a menu that changes, but all these other ones don't really change. So here's more of our file menu, and we can still go in and select anything, but let's say we want to pin quit up here, that's there. So then with one button, we can quit or with one button here, I have save selected. So for me, it's just as easy to go up and click quit over there. So I don't really see a reason to pin it. Here we have more of our transport menu, our play menu. And I have almost everything pinned up to this because these are things that I go to and use all the time. So we have, you know, our groove here and some other things um, there. Uh, we'll have more options for groove once we actually had a clip that would be usable for it, but you know, not worth maybe going into now. We then have some things up here. These do not really change. We have our metronome that we can turn on or off here. We have our looping, we have our punch in or punch out. Add is gonna be for tracks or scenes if we're working from our launcher view. And then here's the one that's interesting. This edit one changes depending on what we have selected. And again, you can pin unique things up for each one. So right now, all I really have is the ability to go forward and go backward. I could put copy, paste, and duplicate up here, but I pretty much use the key commands for those things, so there's no reason to really add it. But when I go and I click on this guy, for example, on the track, you can now see that I have pinned the activate, deactivate. And I could pin other things up here as well, but this is the one that I use probably most frequently. If I create an instrument track and I add a clip, you can see I have different things set up here, including reverse and consolidate. I think I also have the auto fade selected there, and I could pick other things that I wanna choose as well to put onto that menu to pin there. So depending on where I click, that one is going to change. All right, that's the basics of the flexible menu system, pretty straightforward. It's a nice feature. It works well, simple, intuitive. Moving right along, here we have our controllers. Um, very easy to use, very easy to work with. I'm more old school in how I work, so I mostly am just clicking with the mouse and using the keyboard. But if you have one of these controllers and you wanna be smart and actually use the script that has already been written, you can go ahead and select that. And so when you're working with the program, things are already going to be assigned. So if you had like eight knobs, those eight knobs are already gonna be assigned to things depending on where you click. So when you're out on like the mix view, those knobs may do one thing. When you're clicked specifically on a device, those knobs may do another thing. Just takes a couple of days to get used to, but it usually works um, quite well. Uh, but you can also always go in and just kind of do things on your own and set things up manually. So for example, I could, um, right now I don't have any script for it, but let's say that I wanted to set something here. I wanted to map something. I can either choose map to controller or key, and I'll also have the ability to do it from down here, which we will look at in just a little while. But let's say I click map to controller or key, and I move something. Okay, I have this now selected and it's mapped. I can now go in and I have to make sure I choose the right one. I think it's this one. You can see that I have this bad boy set up and I could then adjust things like the max value. Like let's say I, do, I want the maximum here to just go to zero instead. So now instead of going the whole range up, we've limited the range there. And we can also set values with our keyboard as well. So I could like select the solo button here and hit a key on my keyboard. In this case, I'll click S, okay? And we have the ability to then toggle it. There's all sorts of different options that we could select. This is just giving me the different things for that particular audio one uh, target here. These are all the things on that track that could be selected. So now I go out of this have that set up, have that little fader set up, bing, bang, boom, we are in business there. Okay, cool, let's go and actually just delete these things so I don't mess things up later on. Moving right along, I wanna talk a little bit about the browser, okay? You can access the browser by hitting the B button when you're kind of in certain places. So I could hit the B button when I clicked over here. And you can see we have a lot of different options. It works from left to right in here. 
and then when we're over down on this side it kind of works from top to bottom so depending on what you're doing you may find more reasons to use the regular browser uh, or the pop-up browser depending on what you're doing so we have our devices and you can see here that you can add a plugin location anywhere you want you can have as many folders as you want so depending on how you like to organize you may prefer to use collections you may just prefer to organize things inside of folders uh, there are there is there's a couple of benefits to collections one would be that you could put like this reverb plugin or the bitwig reverb in multiple collections without like having to copy and paste the plugin a second time like let's say you had one collection that was for um synth wave synthesizers you had another collection that was for um uh trans synthesizer sorry if you heard the doorbell let me pause this all right we're back i think the point i was trying to make is that um, instead of having to duplicate plugins you could actually just use collections and kind of store the same plugins um, for different categories or for very specific uses so if you're a music producer and somebody that uses a ton of different plugins the collections has a lot of value to you because you can put the devices that you like using for a particular genre of music in those collections. Um, the same thing is true with presets. You can do the exact same thing. This is where it's really interesting because you might say have your trap reverbs and you like some presets on the Bitwig reverb, you like some presets on Altiverb, you like some presets on a different um, synthesizer or a different um, reverb plugin. You could store them all inside of one folder. Uh, which is really cool and really unique. There's also smart collections as well, um, but I actually find that just working with the regular collections is a little bit easier. Smart collections is like if you set up some kind of designation for something, like let's say you had a folder for all of your native instruments plugins, you could set it up so that if you got a new native instrument plugin, by default, it automatically goes into that collection. Uh, but I don't see that much value in that. It's gonna be different for different people, obviously. Um, based on like tags and other things, depending on how you work, obviously. Same thing is going to be true for your samples, your multi samples, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Where it gets really interesting, though, is when you get into your like clips. Okay, so in Ableton Live, clips is like a big thing, saving clips, working with clips. Here in Bitwig, they don't make it that easy to find because from the regular browser, you don't actually get the option to work with clips as far as I know so you have to kind of do it from this browser so for example we could go in here and I'll just show you a couple examples let's go back to the 90s beat D I'm just gonna bring this guy in here and the great thing with clips is that it could save like a lot of different things into the clip not only has it save this little MIDI file it also has saved the drum machine and any of the additional settings that go along with that I think Christian Vogel has some interesting ones in here let's see what this is it's actually an audio clip I'm just trying to see if there's anything interesting I might show you I might have to show you guys an example myself but let's go in and grab something else here's a chord Okay, this is kind of what I wanted to show you. So it saves the device and it also saves any additional effects that are in there. Okay, that's what I was trying to, to get at with the clips. And so this is pretty cool because it works with both plugins and it also works with um, whatever. So like if I was to go in here and add something like a snare, we'll just go and go to location in this case, go into our Bitwig package and let's search for snare. It doesn't really matter what I use. Uh, there's a lot going on with that, isn't there? Uh, those don't sound like snares. All right, that's close enough. If I bring this guy in here, and then I also was to go in and add on a reverb. We'll just take a listen. Whatever, that's good enough. What I could then do is going into my clips library, I could take this guy and I could drag it and I could then save it as a clip, all right, which is really cool and unique. So I could bring it in there, go to creator, 
also saves the BPM, save devices in clip. All of those things are what you're going to want to do. You can click OK, whatever. So it's called, let's call it like Brian Verb Snare, something that I'll remember. Click OK. Now when I go back here into all clip locations and I search for Brian Verb Snare, there it is. It's put it in my library, put it into clips. That's how you work with it. Um, really useful. And you can, of course, go actually further. If you right click on these things, you can kind of have it show where the files are and you can create additional folders. Or the smarter thing to do would, again, probably be to go in here and work with your collections if you want to do that. The last little icon up here just shows you your computer. And when you're working in the current project, very useful for your recordings and bounces. And you can go much further if you're trying to find a very specific sample or something like that, but don't necessarily want to save that as a sample location that's one way to do it all right so that's really the browser in kind of a nutshell maybe I'll show you how the collections work by using the presets option so let's go in here let's create a new collection and I'm gonna call this one like trap verbs this isn't going to be accurate with what I end up saving in here, but just to show it to you. And we'll add another collection um, and we're going to call it something like transverbs. Or we're just going to call it trance, whatever. Uh, to choose what is kind of the target, you can go and choose set as target location. This just means that instead of needing to drag and drop, I can instead go in and um, just hit like the highlight button. So right now, let's choose this guy to be our target location. I'm going to choose everything up here. And now I'm just going to search for like reverb. All right. And this is giving me all of like the reverb presets that exist right now. And some of these exist beyond just the reverb and they're inside of additional containers, which is something I think we'll get into with the next video. But let's say I want this dark room. Let's say that that's a really good one for trap. I could go and just highlight it um, using this guy here. All right. And maybe something else. Let's choose like reverb on the sides. Okay. I'll take that. And that's now going to put those into those trap verb folder for trance. Let's say I just want to kind of drag something in um, deep water dust reverb. I can take that. I could drag it into the trance setting or I could go in here and set this as the target location. So now when I'm going back into everything and this can get a little confusing with the browser, you just have to know where you're at signal flow wise and you could be doing this with the pop up browser as well. I could go in here and for amphitheater, I could go ahead and I could put that in there. But what's really cool is that I don't just have to stick to what's built into Bitwig Studio. Okay, I could also go and here, um, let's see, I think I save something as default. Yeah, so I have this plugin in a default setting that I could then take and I could put that also into, say, trap verbs. And now when I'm looking for something that I want to work with, I can go into these smart collections and for trance, these are the reverb settings I want. These are the ones for trap. These are the ones for trance and it can go much further if you want to add things in like your synthesizer sounds and just sort of to give you a starting point, like instead of working with a template, you can actually work with like collections and drag and drop and have more options to work with. Does it take a lot of time to set all this up? Absolutely. Is it worth it? I don't know. It's up to you and the workflow that you are going to go through. Let's just quickly maybe like jump through um, some of these other things. You can save things into the project. You can see the files that are being used and also the plugins that are being used. And if there's any issues, it will show up there. Moving right along, this is where you're going to be doing uh, <laughs> your input and output stuff. So if you were to do more of like a queue type setup with um, one and two going to the speakers, three and four going to the headphones, you could set some of that stuff up in here. Very easy and straightforward. And here we have all of our different MIDI mappings. And then the last thing, this is kind of new. We have a keyboard panel. Um, let me get out of MIDI so that it's not highlighting stuff. And we can see that we can do things like get these settings here. I actually looked at that in just another video recently. Okay, so that's pretty much, I think, all I need to show you in terms of layout on this screen anyway. We'll have more on that as we continue.
So I didn't talk about multi-samples or um, music, these folders. Multi-samples is going to hold your multi-samples. So if you have sound font files, whatever the case may be, you can go ahead and use these. Um, this is where you save them. This is where you find them. These are all going to open up with the sampler and the collections work exactly the same way. By default here, you can see the piano is actually favorited in here. So uh, by default in all of these different areas, except for the computer, you're going to have a favorites that's already set up for you. And you can just kind of add to that or obviously add your own collections. Under music, this is more for if you're a DJ, but I personally think it makes more sense to almost work with clips in this case. Um, because if you just have like a music file, it's not going to save any of your stretch marks that you've created to put things into time, which is obviously very important if you're DJing on the fly. You need everything warped or stretched in advance so you can just kind of drag or drop. Therefore, what makes more sense is to probably work in the clips section. And then inside of here, you'll create new um, collections that you can use to then drag and drop those clips into, let's say, like, you know, trance 128 or like. Like 128 to 130 whatever the case may be you can have your whole music collection kind of sorted from inside either a collection here or you could actually go further into your like library you're gonna have to right click and um show the file and then make folders and move things either way it's fine maybe the collections would go a little bit faster because you can just immediately kind of then put it where you need to put it um, but that would be one other thing i figured i really should mention um, for those of you who might be using this program to do djing or live performance cool